What's good, superstars? Back with another Wee Box video. You got superstar <laughs> Joe. You got superstar Rob. You got superstar Young in the building. How's it going, guys? <laughs> he's just taking it. He's just taking it. He's not even moving. <laughs> guys, if you are new here, do not forget. Become a superstar. Smash the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell notification so you know whenever we post about new projects that might interest you. Um, I think today we're going to have a bunch of fun uh, having a nice interview with uh, Superstar Young down there. So uh, let's see uh, if you guys learned something. I think we're going to be learning a lot because it's new to us, this project, um, but really excited to hear what you got uh, cooking over there. Um, also, if you guys want, you can become a Superstar VIP. It's $2.99 a month. Hit the join button underneath the video. You get access to all our spreadsheets. First dibs on merch. Star in the universe draw at the end of every single month. Also, you're going to get a nice star next to your name. If you get a different level, you're going to get more utility for those stars. Uh, that all leads into our superstar utility program, which you will find out about in just a second. Twitter, X, Instagram, and Discord in the description. Those are where you want to find us if you have to ever ask us any questions or you want to DM us or talk to us. Um, we also have a great community of people who know about all tons of projects. I'm sure there's people in the superstar fam who already know about Webox. Uh, so, can't wait to hear which one of you guys do know and leave us some comments down below if you did know about it. Also, we have a PO box if you want to send us something, become a superstar Hall of Famer. Here's a superstar utility program. If you don't know about it, end of every month, we do a raffle. Uh, you can earn stars along the way, being a VIP member, minting cryptoids with our link, buying superstar merch, and every single month, if you do not win, we will retain 50% of your stars that you've accumulated and they will be entered into the next month's draw. We're really trying to push for you guys to be able to win something. Uh, right now, two superstar money hats, two super, or one superstar money shirt, two Kid Arcade F NFTs, and a Disney Marvel comic. And maybe we'll convince Superstar Young to help us uh, <laughs> have a whitelist or something like that. We'll, we'll have to figure it out after the fact. But yeah, Superstar Young, how are you doing today, sir? I'm good. I'm good. It's Monday. <laughs> what is great out here? Uh, it's like yeah. lucky you in Vancouver, right? Yeah, I'm based out in Vancouver right now. Yeah, a fellow Canadian, and I think like just to start it off, why don't you tell our audience because just it was it was the superstars who came to us and asked us to reach out to you to learn more about this project. So uh, we we have them to thank. But for those who don't know you, like who are you? What do you do at WeBox? Why don't you give us a quick rundown? Awesome. Yeah, uh, I'm a co-founder uh, and chief product officer of SFT Studios. That's the team behind WeBox. Uh, I've been in the crypto and the tech space um, really early on. I got into Bitcoin when I was 14. Uh, one of the first people to use Toronto's uh, Bitcoin ATM, the very first one downtown. Uh, and I was playing uh, a game called MapleStory. There was a private MapleStory server and they accepted donation points with, uh, with Bitcoin. Uh, from there, quickly turned into me going to like, crypto hackathons uh, in high school. Um, I saw the Kitties get unveiled. Uh, at ETH Waterloo in 2017. That's actually where uh, I met our CTO. He's um, the lead blockchain developer behind CryptoKitties uh, and the OG member at Upper Labs. Um, so yeah, I mean, life's been full circle. Uh, and now I'm kind of, you know, been a full time in the space since uh, 2019, 2020. Uh, and what we're doing with Webox is, you know, kind of a combination of obviously what I enjoy. So crypto is obviously one of them. And uh, number two is kind of anime. So that's what we decided to focus on with our team. So what you mentioned, you mentioned Dapper, you know, your background with some of these other major, major players in the space. Like what are, what like Webox, are you backed by large investors, uh, large companies? Um, is there an involvement and in, in, do you guys work you know, side, shoulder to shoulder with any of, the, of those companies? Yeah. So we did a, we raised a total of 10.4 million um, from investors such as like Animal Good Brands who, who led her around, uh, but we also had notable uh, investors such as Dapper Labs, uh, the types of, you know, groups and um, product studios that really focus on fandom uh, as like a method for mass market adoption. Uh, and we've also had some private investors from um, people from uh, SoftBank, uh, MUFG, et cetera. Okay. And, and do you have any, have you done any drops yet? Is, are you, what's, what's happening with your, your drop schedule? Yeah. So we have a Genesis Mint uh, planned right now for August 21st. Uh, it's a free mint. And this is kind of like our VIP pass to our ecosystem. Um, so we're starting off with Webox, uh, but our team's vision is much more grand than just uh, tokenized anime figurines. Uh, we see us being able to create our own IP, uh, an IP that can house a lot of the Web 2 and Web 3 anime IPs in a digital kind of realm. So 
uh, we heavily avoid the word metaverse. Um, but if you had a metaverse that was made for anime fans, like what would that look like? And it wouldn't necessarily be a game. It wouldn't necessarily be something like Sandbox. Uh, we realize it's a lot more experiential than that. So I, I know that uh, like when it comes to licensed IP, there's a lot of, um, I guess, de- uh, difficulties sometimes with some of these NFT brands getting partnerships and uh, deals and uh, and doing certain things and navigating the waters. Um, how how is that when it comes to anime? Is it is it similar? Are the, are these brands very protective of their IP? Is it something that you guys have had trouble with, or do you have deep roots? Uh, with some of these companies overseas? Like how, how did that play out with your partnership uh, relationships? I'd say Japanese IP holders, especially uh, in anime in general, they're very, very strict about what you can and can't do. Um, I think it comes down to like just cultural level of like having respect. Um, way back in the day, I got in trouble because I was using like uh, anime gifts on Twitter, for example. Oh, really? All right. So, it's, so there is a level of you know, <laughs> lines and stuff like that. But uh, we're very fortunate. I mean, we've been in communication with the largest, the two largest uh, manga publishers in Japan uh, from our favorite series, uh, like Naruto, Bleach, those publishers, same with Attack on Titan, uh, for well over a year to a year and a half now. Uh, we've gone through a lot of different licensing deals, uh, reviewing contracts, seeing what, you know, what can we push on, what we can't. Um, and more importantly, uh, we established a good relationship there. Um, our, our head of IP licensing was the person who was responsible for uh, bringing Yu-Gi-Oh to the states, both the trading cards and the uh, and the television series, um, and we're also very tightly affiliated with uh, Animoca Brands Japan, uh, and they were also invested into. They raised fifty million from MEFG as well as Kodansha and Shueisha, the, the, those two manga publishers that I mentioned, uh, and we share the same CEO. So that kind of starts to paint the picture of um, like the IP catalog and the, uh, and the and that runway that we have there. So. In terms of actual announced IP, for, for those, the anime fans, and we have some of them, uh, some superstars, they're making actually YouTube videos about how important anime is going to be to the space. Uh, what, what brands do you have that you've announced that you, you have on board right now? Is there anything, yeah. uh, any names that you can give us? Yeah, so for season one, uh, so Vbox is going to do drops in seasons, and each season is going to be comprised of four total IP. Uh, as of right now, we're sticking to doing like two Web 2 and two Web 3 uh, IPs. So on the Web 3 side, uh, we've locked down Oni and we're very excited to actually um, you know, do tokenized figurines for them as well. Uh, and on the Web 2 side, we have Ghost in the Shell, which should be a pretty big one that everyone uh, has heard of, uh, as well as Afro Samurai, which is slightly more niche, but that mangaka is uh, very, very famous. Uh, he's done stuff for like Star Wars Visions. Um, I, if you look at the voice actors and just like the, the type of animation for Afro Samurai, you'll see why it's uh, kind of considered like a legacy hit. So when you, when you're talking Web two versus Web three, are we are we talking on the blockchain versus off the blockchain? More like digital, uh, collectible versus like actual ownership. Is that is that the difference between the two? Not really. I would say like Web three IP anime IP to me is anyone who's trying to build like their own indie manga or indie anime. Um, so like Azuki is a great example of that. Uh, Oni Force is another great example of that. They just had like a comic run uh, and they were out at Comic Con, right? So um, there's a few projects out there that are creating IP that's still supposed to be consumed by general consumers. Um, and they're obviously interested in merchandise that's still like the most uh, revenue generating uh, market segment of anime, uh, as well as you know, having additional eyes, having additional Web2 recognition. Uh, and those are the t- types of offerings that we have for them. So are, are are these NFTs, are they, do they come with like a digital file that's importable into any kind of, you know, like Unity or, or Unreal Engine? Like, is there, is it, is it backed like that? Is it a, like almost a PFP where it's a 2D image? So for Weebox specifically, it's going to focus on anime figurines. So unlike VV, we're going to actually do a physical run. Um, okay. These are all tokenized with individual uh, physical back chips. Um, and what we're doing that's a little bit more innovative is giving each anime uh, figurine its own crypto wallet. So the ecosystem that we kind of envision is, uh, let's say I have like a Naruto figurine uh, that's physical and I can hold on to it. Um, and maybe there's 5,000 of these and there's a limited edition run. They'll never be made again in this style. Uh, but each one of them has a crypto wallet or an NFT wallet that we've, that we've assigned to it. 
Um, so that means as a user, you might be doing something like, okay, maybe you got like a, like a Sage of Six Path skin for Naruto. Uh, and that is also a collectible. That's an NFT. That's a skin that's now attached as an NFT, something physical. What happens to that physical? Like, do you feel more attached to that physical object now? Can that physical object be priced at a higher value because of the collectible that's been associated to it? That's kind of the ecosystem that we're trying to create. So, so in terms of like the actual asset being something like in Unity, um, we're not building like an SDK. So I'm sure you're kind of looking at cryptos and stuff like that. That's not really in our um, vision, I would say. Uh, but we are building like an ecosystem to be able to interact with these, customize with these, and different gamified experiences um, to kind of you know further that level of attachment. Uh, that okay. Fans yeah, and 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 so that means. There's a, so all of the NFTs that you will be offering are all backed by at least one physical, let's say, character in the real world, or is there any only digital offerings? Um, there will be very few only digital offerings. Uh, we really see digital offerings as like an onboarding tool or some sort of like marketing initiative. So like, let's just say like, oh, um, all of our Genesis Pass holders can get, uh, redeem like a purely digital anime figurine. But if you own that, it serves as like a whitelist, right? So you have like a tradable whitelist or something like that. Um, otherwise, you know, every every single figurine that we release, um, we plan on it going into physical production. We, we plan on, you know, shipping, manufacturing, uh, embedding those chips um, and, and, and uh, making them soul bound as soon as they're redeemed. So the chip, is that the actual, like almost like a ledger kind of thing? Or is it you use the chip and you read that like you scan a QR code or something like that and it pops up in the app? Is that so think you have to think about the chip as like a way that it verifies ownership. So like right now, if I own an NFT, um, I'm just looking on chain to see like who owns it. Yeah. Uh, as soon as you abstract that out into the real world, um, just how you need to have like a signature, a unique signature, or you know, your 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 seed phrase, whatever it is to access that NF uh, that crypto wallet or NFT, mm -hmm. um, it's all embedded within that physical chip. So, so essentially if you don't have that physical chip uh after you've redeemed it you um you can't really trade it on a digital marketplace anymore so that's why we're also looking at like physical escrow services uh like gm.co so are you are you at all like in terms of onboarding through physical though because like are these physical figurines are they only going to be available once you purchase the digital side first and then they get sent to you or are they going to be in store and then you buy the physical and in it, you're going to have almost like a little code that's going to link to you, link the, the, uh, the NFT with both. it. The goal is both. I mean, we will 100% be doing OOH stuff at like anime conventions, like LAX and stuff. Um, one of our founder dreams that we have is to have like a pop up store in Shibuya Park Go beside like the Pokemon Center and like the Shonen Jump Shop, which uh, you'll see some stuff from us soon. Um, but in the Web2 world, anime figurines that are of high quality, um, that, are, you know, that are like blue chip collectibles to anime fans, um, they're all made to order, right? They're not usually like mass, mass, mass produced uh, collectibles. Uh, and since they're made to order, it's uh, you're on Crunchyroll or any other like major streaming, streaming or e-commerce platform, uh, you're doing a pre-order. And on average, that pre-order takes like anywhere from eight to 12 months for manufacturing and shipping, which sounds, um, Sounds like a long time, but like that's just the norm. So one of the ways that we open the door to doing stuff in figurines is actually speaking with manufacturers and you know telling them like there's an experience here that we can provide to users even before the physical has been uh, received. And then you mentioned gamification. You want to offer some kind of gamification to to your your users and and your your customers. What how exactly is that going to look? Uh, so there's. So this, is, this gets a little bit complex to explain because what we're doing with San Fran Tokyo is, you know, like Webox is just one store inside a city that we're trying to create. And within that city, there's many, many brand touch points um, and many different, you know, things to do, right? Those things could end up being games uh, that are created in collaboration with, with uh, Anime IP as well as our partners. Um, it could also be like a daily gacha which is like a very reminiscent um, and fan favorite experience that exists within Web2, uh, as well as, you know, customizing like a cosmetic or skin, uh, you know, designing your collectible in that sense. Uh, so there's gamification really layered throughout the experience. Um, if anything, that's kind of the area that we're focusing on, right? We're not like an OEM manufacturing company 
uh, we're, we're very much focused on creating that digital layer and that digital experience. Do you, I, I know that you mentioned a little bit, sorry, I was going back. Uh, you mentioned about the physical. Do you have any prototypes like developed already? Is this something that hasn't been uh, yeah, made so, yet? Or is it like proof of concept yet? So we, have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of different vendors as well as manufacturers uh, in Japan. Um, and they're very well established. Like they've all done like a Naruto figurine or they've all done like some sort of like major IP figurine. Um, so those are the partners that we're working with there. Um, we don't have 3D prototypes that are ready to show yet. Um, but probably in the next two months or so, uh, we should have some solid marketing content around like, what does it look like? How does it feel? Showing some of the quality, uh, as well as explaining again, like we've got to show the chip, show where the chip goes, et cetera, just so that consumers can kind of get a better grasp of what the product experience is. Yeah, the visual is a good idea. I mean, you just touched on it a little bit too. Do you have like a, a, a marketing plan for this uh, uh, to get behind more people's eyeballs? I mean, now the space is really starting to develop. A lot of competition is coming out. Oh, yeah. uh, I feel like it's, it's starting to get a little bit harder to stand out. I mean, what, what do you guys plan to do to market to, to stand out? I, I got to be careful because there's some things that I can't say. <laughs> but um, let's say that we have a pretty sure guarantee way to get access to a couple million Web2 anime fans. Um, we've already included some, and hinted at what this is, but uh, myself and another co-founder of mine will be taking uh, some senior let up, some senior um, public facing leadership roles. Um, and that should kind of paint the picture as to what that will look like. I mean, I mentioned OH stuff at conventions. Again, we're, we're working with established IP, right? We're not exactly pushing our own IP to Web2. We're pushing this, the content that they already like and have already enjoyed while we start to kind of grassroots feed our own IP towards Web3. Um, we do have content planned for Web2 consumers, <laughs> short, you know, short comic series or short manga series or web comics. Um, I think that's all I can say right now. Are yeah. your IP open to advertising for you guys? Is that, is that uh, a... Well, most of the time, I you know, unless it's like a currently airing series, um, it's challenging, right? Mm -hmm. Normally, the IP holders are not the ones going out and creating marketing content or marketing campaigns. It's uh, people who are on the IP committee who are responsible for other areas of uh, the IP management. So, for example, um, our team is actually on an IP committee for an anime that just started um, airing in Japan. Um, on that committee, we're responsible for the merchandising. Um, so you can imagine that when it comes time to get that into production, have it ready for a season two, um, when it starts airing in you know international as opposed to just just Japan, um, what that marketing content can kind of be look uh, can kind of look like and also be created towards. Okay, cool. What what kind of so this digital environment is it is it going to be accessible for now through just like a, a web app is it going to be like a downloadable web app will it be like a mobile app Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, <clears throat> right now, we're strictly looking at web app, uh, but but with the experience and the, with the product experience that we're creating around um, the actual physical anime figurines, we realize like a mobile companion app makes a lot of sense. Uh, but there's obviously limitations to what we can do just because of iOS and App Store regulation. Um, so it's not like VV in the sense where we'd have to create like an you know an off-chain currency, um, and all the mints are happening through you know iOS or whatever. Uh, we'd probably keep everything on web app for for that sake, but have some sort of companion app that allows um, either customization, um, activations, or some sort of engagement. Uh, is uh, is is the app being developed in house? Do you uh, do you have to get uh third parties involved for this type of stuff? Uh, how big is your team like that type of? So we're at like 20 full time plus maybe five contractors and another maybe three, um, I guess, part time. So we're pretty stacked. Uh, we've been around. Um, we do have mobile app development experience um, with some of our engineers, uh, but we're obviously focusing on our web app right now. Uh, ideally, we keep everything in house, uh, even like the, the, the physical chip. UX, uh, the standards, uh, everything's open source in Web3. So mm -hmm. we find that, you know, it's an opportunity, right? We don't need to necessarily build from scratch, but we can start to modify and make this something our own. What what other forms of utility? So obviously the digital is a big utility. That's something that I think is very interesting. I think a lot of people in the space really do like that and appreciate that. 
what other forms of utility um we talked a little bit about the gamification part of it but is there any other kind of like through the licensor uh, like a, a real world utility like that licensor will say okay well if you have this figurine you know maybe we'll give you access to you know an after party uh, at comic-con or whatever right i mean ip in general is not necessarily interested in like the um... I would say like whatever like traditional Web3 utilities looked at. Like I'm just looking at like, you know, uh, D gods right now. Um, and then and then kind of going out and saying utility is the community that we've curated or the utility is the social reach that you'll get. Um, for us, we wanted our utility to just be like tangible loyalty slash like direct. Like there's no bullshit. Like, okay, this is what it'll get you. Like you either want that or don't. Um, when it comes to the fidgetals, for the anime figurines, it's pretty clear and concise. It's a physical back token. There's an MSRP price, which maybe protects your bags. There's you know layers of you know ecosystem and layers of digital collectibles on top of it that you're getting access to. Um, that's kind of clear and cut, right? We don't need to add. We don't really plan or want to add more. Otherwise, it becomes a little bit too much to digest for Web two and Web two consumers, which is what we're trying to set this up for. Uh, but when it comes to Web three, and you know we we have a good understanding. We have a lot of DGENs and shitcoin traders in in house. Um, <laughs> Self included, uh, but when it comes to like the Web three utility, it's a little bit of a different game, right? So, um, this Genesis Mint that we're doing on the twenty first uh, is not like a WeBox uh, NFT. This is like a, the San Fran Tokyo NFT. So, it's, so it's kind of like the umbrella that's housing those types of businesses. Um, we've been pretty public about the utility so far that we've announced. So, um, all holders are going to get like VIP access to these anime figuring drops. Right. So this is, again, one store, one set of utility, potentially more, depending on other activations. Um, but we've also mentioned things like um, uh, a free airdrop to our profile picture collection, which uh, we're planning as well. We think digital identities um, is very, very important, especially for anime fans, given that they're kind of chronically online. Um, yeah, I'm sure you know, like the Twitter meme where someone has an anime profile picture and it's like, oh, your opinion's invalid, right? So like there's like mainstream stereotypes around just the presence of our communities kind of and we want to play to that as well um but as the city grows as content grows um we were already working on the second store in the city and we think it's going to be very very um very very exciting for the web3 audience because it's you know webox is definitely like a web2 web2.5 kind of demographic right we want to onboard like millions of users um through something physical but that's the I was gonna say that I was gonna just just speaking of that, like I have a friend and she loves anime. She showed me the anime tracker that she has. You know, finished two hundred and sixteen anime uh, st- a series, and there's has a bunch on our watch list. And I asked her, and she collects figurines as well. When she went to Japan and visited, she would buy the figurines and come back. But it makes me wonder, like, like I feel like someone like that is your perfect target audience. Do you think that that someone like that though will be able, like, you'd be able to onboard someone? who's so into that web two space and they're just really completely unfamiliar with wallets, you know, unfamiliar yeah. with all these things. Like what's your, what's your thoughts on that? So at the end of the day to those users, we're still sent, we're still selling them like a physical good, right? There's an experience underneath it that's powered by digital collectibles and NFTs, but at the end of the day, they're still buying a physical good from something that they've already maybe spent a couple hundred dollars on and just merchandise. Uh, when it comes to web two, you know, there's things that we have to do on the development and the product side, like credit card, primary sale transactions, um, smart contract, smart contract uh, wallets, as opposed to MetaMask, um, like social single sign on, like terminology, like they don't use the word NFT uh, moving forward for any of our IP drops, for example. So there's, you know, finicky things that exist there. But again, I think people really, unless like you're in the anime space, I feel like it's almost hard to grasp just how like digital savvy this uh these types of consumers are um like why did discord become like the main kind of social hub for web3 it's not because there was like a mainstream web3 project it was because you know anime users who are gamers right that cross section they all used, started using discord um and then only force i think was like the first anime pfp right they leveraged discord for like social engagement and, 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 and social farming um and that kind of started that meta where everyone started to migrate but it's like Anime fans were already there since like 2014 using Discord. Um, I think I had my Discord like two months after the product released. I, I saw it on Reddit, for example. Um, and at the end of the day, right, like 
these are the types of consumers who are spending thousands of dollars on purely digital assets already that aren't NFTs, right? There was like a recent uh, character that was released in a game called Honkai Star Rail. Um, and I, again, like I, my timeline was just filled with people pulling gacha, uh, spending thousands of dollars just to get this one character, I think 1,400. Wow. Uh, it's not an NFT, they can't do anything with it, they just like it, right? There's no other consumer base that's doing that for digital assets, maybe outside of video games. Um, and I think like that's you know clearly like a better demographic for us to be focused on. So is um, I know that you you mentioned how like Webox is going to have a big uh, physical counterpart uh, where people can I guess buy the physical and then that's kind of their their access into certain uh, NFTs or whatever. Is is the plan to launch with any kind of digital marketplace or is the only marketplace going to be like offline? If you sell your physical then now that person has access to those right. digitals. Is that how it's going to work? Great, great question. So all of our NFTs start digital. So remember how I said like an eight to 12 month kind of pre-order period. Yeah. Um, so during that eight to 12 months, it's, it's just like a, it's a traditional NFT. It can be traded, transacted, bid on, auctioned off, whatever. Um, but after those, uh, after the physical production is finished, people are going to have a claim period where they can now go and mm -hmm. say, okay, here's my, I want you to ship it to this address uh, with this detail. Here's like the shipping fee, whatever. Um, as soon as that goes through, that transaction goes through, that token then becomes um, bound to the user's wallet. And the only way to trade that NFT turns into something physical, um, which is why I mentioned like there is some sort, there is a little bit of a need for some sort of um, like escrow based marketplace. Um, we're not going to build it ourselves. We already know there's tons in Web3 that we're interested in. Um, and some of them are actually from the anime, Web3 anime community. So there's <clears throat> affinity there. Uh, but when it comes to Web2, um, we 100% need our own marketplace, um, something that's like optimized for Web2 consumers so they don't have to leave our ecosystem. Uh, but we are starting off, obviously, like we're on ETH, we're on mainnet, we're using OpenSea, Blur, uh, X2, Y2, Looks Rare, all the major marketplaces um, for the time being. So we love to overanalyze. I just found it funny how you, uh, how you market yourself. You know, you said here that you're building the web three Nintendo plus Hasbro for international item fans. And I kind of get it. You know, you got the physical side, the Hasbro side, the Nintendo's going to be that gaming kind of anime side. Is there any involvement of Nintendo or Hasbro at all in this? Like is it just the selection of how you're trying to explain that combination of Hasbro and Nintendo? Is there something more to that? Or, or like, what is that? I mean, if we were, then they wouldn't let us say this. <laughs> um, the reason for it, you know, the very first kind of way I wanted to pitch what I wanted to do um, was by saying, like, imagine if Nintendo, a gaming company, and Hasbro, a phys you know, a toy company slash an IP company, uh, had a baby, and it happened to be like a weeb or like a really diehard anime fan that was born in Web three. Um, and that, that kind of stuck really well with the team. It stuck really well with our investors. Um, and it paints, the, it paints the picture as, 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 as well as it could, right? Nintendo has Amiibos, which was like a very hot kind of collectible. And you can imagine what that experience is going to be for us. It's re Amiibo reminiscent, I would say, right? Uh, and then on the Hasbro side, where we're actually, you know, working on physicals, but then also creating our own IP. Um, so we just thought it was a good analogy. We've asked uh, this question to other CEOs before. Uh, Actually, we had the, the co-founders, all five of them from Cryptoys on. And I asked them, I said, do you think that within the next calendar year, let's say 12 months, that Nintendo could be convinced to enter into this space? Like just from what you know from just the space in general, or do, like we, are, we know that they're very protective. We know they don't enter the even Funko Pops. They're not, they don't have given their license out there. Do you think that, uh, that they are even looking at this space? And do you think that they, they could be there by, by next year? Uh, I mean, Nintendo is like a, like a very finicky group. Um, I mean, you know, nothing but love. Like we have close uh, seniors that we speak to uh, relatively often. Um, but Nintendo is very Web2 minded. Um, I'm not sure if you guys saw, but like they're taking down like content creators on YouTube, like video game content creators who were, were making wow. Legend of Zelda videos or um, they're cracking down on streamers as well. Um, so I feel like that attitude slash that mentality, if it's, you know, where it lies at least like three, four months ago when that was making headlines, um, it will take some time. But that's kind of why we're coming in now to show like, how is it done? It doesn't necessarily need to be done and leveraged by like the owners or like the main businesses, but 
um, licensors like us, right? Um, Third-party licensors that are going to come in and, and, and want to focus and build that experience. A good example of this would be Square Enix. I think Square Enix literally did like an anime figurine, uh, physical anime figurine pre-order, and you could pay 40 bucks extra to get like the NFT of it. But there was like no attachment. There was no connectivity between them. The platform wasn't out. Platform was on like engine or it was on like, some weird niche blockchain. Um, so Web3 people didn't care. Web2 people didn't care. And Web2 people also just like, you know, it was a shitstorm on Twitter for like a good week. Um, and I think that kind of sums up the experience of like a lot of Web2 businesses, right? Like it's hard to enter the space because if you just don't know, you'll make the same mistakes that everyone else has. Um, so I feel like we're, we're in like a very special spot where businesses like Nintendo and Hasbro can, can start to look at us uh, either for benchmarks um, and feel confidence in the space again. Cool. So the, the drop you have here is August 21st. I don't know for anyone watching, if they're interested and they wanted to, to participate, like, do you know, based on the mint size, they said 2000 mints, do you know if do your whitelists exceed that? Would there even be any available for the public? So we have a so we did an application form for um, our stage one, our guaranteed mint. So we basically hand selected the people that we wanted to mint the project because I mean the face the space is full of you know flippers, grifters, grinders. Uh, we were very explicit and say like yo, we reserve the right to pick who gets to mint our free NFT. Um, we didn't, re you know, we're not rewarding Discord grinders or Discord engagement spammers. There's nothing like that. Um, so we tried to stay organic as possible. That stage one list uh, has around 1,800 people in it, um, and then our second stage is first come first serve, and we reserve that for like our collaborations, uh, some of the giveaways, um, some of the you know neighboring communities kind of, um, and they would obviously get anything that doesn't mint out during stage one, uh, as well as whatever's been allocated or whatever's remaining in allocation. And then if stage one and stage two uh, still have supply remaining, then it, it would go into public. But I, I think everyone in Discord is saying this is not going to public, so knock on wood. Yeah, I mean, how how large is your Discord? I think how there's twenty four thousand people in there right now. Wow. Yeah. So then I think it's it's probably they know. I mean, the people <laughs> usually know. These, it, if especially if you give a whitelist too, somebody doesn't want to waste it, right? So if you give if you get one, you you don't just let it go to waste. You got to you got to use it. What do you have like um. A drop scheduled or have you announced any the date of like a, a drop to come after uh so we've been pretty public about like the timelines and like our expected roadmap uh we're looking at around october for our first ip drop um we obviously you know we don't want to lock in things like three months in advance and then rush to do a shitty experience that might not hit uh but you know we've been pretty public we're looking at um Sometime in August, um, sorry, sometime in October. And the mint, the, what kind of mint run are you looking for something like this? Since there's the whole physical side, is there like a limitation to like how much you can actually offer? Like could, could you offer only a thousand because of the physical side or are you able to do 5,000? Is there, what kind of unique, let's say challenges maybe you have versus just someone who's interested in the digital because of the physical? Um, so every drop that we do is going to be limited edition. Um, and again, buying the NFT is going to equate to essentially buying that physical. Um, and obviously buying that physical is getting you access into that digital experience that we're creating around um, customization for that figure, digital customization for that figure, and then turning those obviously into NFTs. So our ecosystem might look something like, okay, figurines are at the very top, kind of like the flagship, uh, but then there might be stuff like cosmetic skins, <laughs> Uh, maybe emotes and poses, um, like scenes and environments, uh, props, and, you know, I can just continue on. But the collectible ecosystem is in that second layer, not necessarily that first layer. Have, uh, have you guys done or thought of doing any collaborations with other projects uh, in the space? Have you guys met or talked with any of them and uh, shared ideas? Yeah, I mean, um, we've. I would say I've talked to every major anime IP um, NFT project by this point. Um, so everyone knows what we're doing. You know, that includes like Azuki, Oni Force, um, pretty much anything from like Uwu Crew as well. Um, again, like we look at Web3 IP no different than Web2 IP. 
Uh, obviously, like things like quantity, price, additions, all that changes between the Web2 audience and the Web3 audience. Uh, but it's a very, you know, we want to treat Web3 IP as if it's, you know, a Web2 IP. Like it's the same business pipeline, same manufacturing process, um, maybe different quality of a figurine. Maybe there's like a Model 3 versus a Model S plaid kind of approach that we take to it. Um, but I would say on, on the BD side, yeah, pretty much any anime project out there is probably aware or have already spoken to us. So I'm just curious, since you're a co-founder, like how was it that you guys even came to developing these deals in the Asian markets? Like how were you able to break the Asian market considering that like right now, for example, you're based here in, in Vancouver in Canada. Did you live there for a bit? Like how, how did that happen? So I go out to Japan maybe once a quarter, uh, but our founding team uh, is very well established at just in, in Japan in general. So if you're not familiar, Japan's like business community is like very small, very tightly knit. It's either you know you're either you're in or you're not kind of thing. Mm. Um, and like depending on like you know this hierarchy, right? So if you're up at the top, like you're either on like national television for like an interview or you're on Forbes. Um, and we're very fortunate. So our our CEO. Daisuke Waze, he uh, was responsible for IP, uh, taking to IPO uh, Japan's first digital life insurance company. Um, he's been featured on national TV. He's been featured on Forbes, so many other like uh, Japanese PR and uh, publications as well. Uh, but because of his kind of like business tenure, uh, it brings a lot of credibility when we go to and speak to uh, IP holders or IP um, IP committees in general. They don't want to like an nft project could send like a, any ip like an email and they're guaranteed it's just getting thrown in like the spam um which is tragic but on our side we obviously leveraged our relationship that we have with our ceo um his network uh and that kind of grew into animoka brands japan uh, where he was brought on as the ceo there um and further kind of cemented uh, the relationships that we have with uh, ip holders yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty incredible because I, I can see that. I mean, the relationships is the main thing. I, I, I know that some of the other projects that we talked to, breaking the Asian market is actually a little bit of a challenge, but you're almost stemming from there. So when it comes to shipping out, like, is there any, is, is this worldwide? Is there any restrictions to anyone? Like, if you're in the States, you're, you're, you can get it. If you're in any Asian market, you can get it. Like, how are you going to uh, deal, I guess, with the, the, the global aspect of this space, how you have people all over the world who may be going for this. Is there restrictions or, or is it pretty much open to anyone who can get it? Um, well, for this event, I would say, sorry, wait, I'm not sure if I got the question correct. Like eventually you're going to have mints that I'm assuming are not whitelisted, right? Eventually you're going to have public mints. Is that going to be just available to everybody? in the in, in the world in the globe or is there any kind of restrictions to that yeah so it depends on the licensing deal with ip um so licensing deals are typically uh region based or relatively region based like north america versus like asia um obviously we try to go for international uh but you know we, we do our market research like how how is, how is the fan demographic uh, on this half of the globe versus the other um same thing with like our thing looking into our community like where are they based um, and that obviously affects licensing, uh, licensing fees, royalty fees, et cetera. So, you know, it comes down to the bottom line, but, uh, with our season one IP, obviously like web three IP is international. Um, but for ghost, for Afro Samurai as well, it should be international, but I think ghost in the shell might be region locked, uh, to outside of Japan only. All right. So it's a case by case basis. Okay, very interesting. I, I mean, a lot of people are going to want to know. Sorry, Rob. Uh, yeah. I know, I know. A lot of my friends, they're into One Piece. Is is that the IP that you guys are chasing, or is it is it one that's already has a project? Uh, I'm not. I'm not too familiar. Um, I would say yes. There is IP that we're chasing, and it's IP that anybody in the space would be chasing. Yeah. Um, I would say that we're closer than anybody else because we actually have like a tangible thing that we want to create versus a random NFT project saying like, oh, we love, we love your anime. Can we use it? Right. Yeah. Versus us saying like, yo, we're, we're no different than your, the previous contracts that you've had. And maybe we just have a set of two, one for a digital and one for physical. Um, but we're obviously trying to get like Blockbuster, Blue Chip, everybody and their mother knows types of series. We want to build up to them. Um, 
uh, we're still pretty happy with the IP that we curated for season one. Um, but by season three, like we should have already, you know, we should have check boxes essentially for like the top five anime series uh, internationally. Very cool. How long is the season going to last, do you think? To- Ooh, I mean, I would say like we don't want to do too many drops uh, in a short time frame just because I think people would say, oh, it's liquidity extraction. But in reality, like we're, you know, we're taking it to Web2. So if anything, we're bringing in liquidity. Um, but again, production time is anywhere from eight to 12 months for a physical. We could ease, we could still sell the digital, we could still sell the digital like well in advance. Um, but because of that manufacturing time, we don't want to go overboard and, you know, do like 50 drops this year and then none of them have been delivered until like next year. Yeah. We might be to focus on like you know, anywhere from like eight to 16, uh, and really kind of emphasize quality. So it could be like a year between seasons kind of thing. I would say anywhere from like eight to 12 months. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I just, I know, I know we got, we have a limitation on time. I think we've asked a lot of questions here. I just want to, before we, we close out, if anybody's interested, go on Twitter, you can look up Webox and on the Webox uh, Twitter, you can see the discord, which clearly there's 24,000 members on their discord. So you can feel free to join that discord to stay in touch with what's going on there. That's how I was able to reach out to you. So I think it's probably a pretty effective way. Uh, you can also follow them on Twitter. Look at that 48.4 thousand or 48,000 followers on Twitter. So if you're into anime and you're into this, you can find them on Twitter. You can find them on Discord. Before we close out, Superstar Young, is there anything else, maybe some alpha you can give for those who stuck around this long? Mm-hmm. Is there anything you could you can maybe tell the people watching, any any alpha that 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 you can share? Uh, uh, I mean, Webox is one of many stores that we're going to build. Uh, if I got to say anything, I would say, like, you know, maybe some hints to what our second store is going to be. Um, so let's say something with pirates and uh, still anime, still Web3, has a PFP, but we're building another store. I wonder what that could be. We'll, we'll wow. leave it at that. We'll oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right, that's good. So before we close out, fantastic job, Joe. We got we got to do our usual round of applause here. Standing go. Shit. Oh. Great. Right. Right. No, you, no, no, it's all good. No, it's we're for you, man. You. Yeah, you 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 sat on the hot seat here for forty minutes. I mean, we're we're coming from a perspective here that we really want to learn about the project because for the superstars to come and ask us for it, we knew that this must have been something special. It looks like you got something really interesting and really unique going on with the physical being the driving force behind the uh behind the background uh behind the platform the only time i think i've heard of this was maybe hro on the dc side with their cards but those are cards they're not figurines it's just a different level of like manufacturing on the physical side so it's super interesting and anybody's watching please feel free to leave comments below uh if you guys enjoyed the video if you have any further questions you can let us know below join their discord you can also join our Discord uh, as well. Uh, I think we might have to add an anime section. That was a request that we were getting, an anime section, uh, so you guys can share those thoughts. And if you do join the Webox Discord, let them know the Superstar sent you. Um, so, guys, before we close out, thank you again, Superstar Yam. We really appreciate you and your time being here. And before you guys go, don't forget, if you haven't already, become a Superstar, smash the subscribe button, join the Superstar fam, hit the bell notification button so you get every single video every single day you don't know what we're gonna hit you with all right we're gonna hit you with just all sorts of different things every single day so hit that bell so you stay informed on the space and also superstar vips 2.9 a month start beside your name ask for our spreadsheets give away as much utility as possible through the utility program guys thank you all so much we appreciate you take care and we'll see you next one bye-bye love you